Martin Schneider is a uh, editor and writer, uh, lives in Philadelphia, and he was sending out emails, and he realized that uh, the people he sent out emails to were at times uh, dismissive or abusive of him, quite frankly. And then he noticed that uh, his email signature had changed, and it was his, one of his uh, co-workers. It was uh, Nicole Hallberg's name, and so he brought this to her, told her, and they decided for two weeks they would switch their uh, email signatures, so she would use his and he would use hers, and uh, it was amazing what happened. After about uh, two weeks, they noticed that for her, she was very productive, got a lot accomplished that time, and for Martin, a lot of things stalled out, and he had some pretty hard uh, interactions on email with some of the people he was communicating with. So, is this something that uh, is surprising to hear this? Is it, is it a revelation, or is it just that time? Well, I think for me, it's, it's just an example of the um, filters in which we interpret information. And so automatically, it's this idea of who we're speaking to. Um, and that, that determines how we're going to read the information, how we're going to respond to it. Um, and uh, we make these assumptions about people all the time. Um, it's unfortunate that this is the situation with gender specifically, that um, there's, um, I guess, a free-for-all and an opportunity for people to speak um, disrespectfully to someone else. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it uh, that, that I found most interesting was the idea that there was not just conversations around the work that she was doing, but then conversations around um, like how long have you been doing this and how familiar are you with this industry and it, like even for the fact that when he uh, was writing under the name Nicole uh, at one point was asked are you single and like recognizing how kind of inappropriate that was and uh, knowing that this is not uh, unique to this particular situation uh, but knowing I know that my partner has had conversations with people within his company who you know after wrapping up work they'll ask like oh do you work with so-and-so can you tell me if she's single right and just being like this is a totally normal conversation and completely appropriate for me to ask you in the context of doing business about a female coworker and what you think my shots are with you know maybe getting a number and that it's it's something that perhaps um, women are familiar with, but when men's attention is brought to it, 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 it seems all the more ridiculous. Well, and we've seen people do this in the past with, with um, social media and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Where they'll, they'll try using a woman's name on social media for a while or, you know, doing that sort of thing. And, and I know a lot of women who intentionally don't use gendered identifiers when they're, when they're using these things. But I think this tells you that it's not only when people are anonymous mm -hmm. do they do they behave this way towards women. And and I think women have known this a lot of women have known this for a while. I didn't find it surprising. Yeah. Because you, you do get to know you get to know how you're treated in face to face interactions with people and in meetings and in so many professional contexts. And so but it's often so hard for women to convince men that this happens, yeah. you know. And so the men that you know, the men that you work with, your employer, your boss, you're trying to talk about these situations. And so often it's, it's seen as not really valid. And so I think that's where it becomes meaningful. And it's, it's frustrating that men have to experience it before they believe it. Like, yeah. we should just believe women when they tell us these things happen. Yeah. Um, but you know, at least it's, it's bringing it forward and it's getting some attention to the issue. Well, and when, and when this man in question realizes and felt it, like he really, really felt it, when he brought it forward to his boss to kind of explain one of the reasons why perhaps he was more efficient in his work than his female counterpart, his boss expressed doubt and said that there would probably be multiple reasons uh, why this had happened this way and perhaps why she was taking longer and that, you know, he couldn't really make a judgment on two weeks of using a different signature. And I think that was probably just just as frustrating for him as it would have been for a female employee to try and explain, well, I'm actually not as efficient at my work because I'm spending half my time defending myself. Well, and I've heard this with, um, with females who work in male-dominated um, industries and applying for jobs and using initials instead of their full name mm -hmm. just to get an interview. Really? Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, you get pushed aside um, based on a word in your name. Mm-hmm. I know that so I work in education, and then there are clearly a lot of women in education. Um, but I found when I moved from teaching into consulting, and I was working with sexual orientation and gender identity, that I would have to spend the initial part of any meeting with anyone. How long have you been doing this work? How did you get into this work? Tell us a bit about yourself. And there would be this very kind of strange path where you wouldn't 
care about someone who's a curriculum consultant in English, right? Like, how long have you been interested in English? You know, but it was all of a sudden, I, I need to work out more about you. I need to be able to place you. And when I would drop words like partner and my partner's name being gender neutral Morgan, um, people would get uncomfortable and try and figure me out and want to know more and dig a little deeper. And, and it would be really difficult to accomplish work because I would be set back having conversations about why I was doing what I was doing. Not how effectively I could do it or what services I could offer, hmm. but, but who am I and why am I doing this? And that would be really, really frustrating. And it does get to the point where you will turn, you know, or at least I have, where, I've, where something's happened and there has been a man who's a friend or my, my spouse or someone next to me and I and I've ended up turning to them going did that did that just happen yeah <laughs> you know it's it, it's like did did that really just happen because it gets to the point where you start to think like you know am I sensitive mm -hmm. am I am I imagining this I'm making it up and so that's why I think it's when when somebody else sees it and witnesses it it feels really empowering it mm. feels validating yeah yeah all right ladies thank you as always it is educational and I, I really do appreciate these Monday nights yeah all right, let's take a quick break here on the show. When we come back, we've got lots more as we take you to the 7 o'clock hour, including our good friend Bridget Ryan. Stay with us for that, Edmonton.